In the world of 13th century Japan, the teachings of a single man reverberated with a profound and unsettling power. Nichiren Daishonin, a Buddhist monk known for his uncompromising devotion to the Lotus Sutra, stood as a beacon of controversy and enlightenment amidst the turmoil of his age. Nichiren's unwavering belief in the supremacy of the Lotus Sutra led him to make bold proclamations that challenged the very foundations of the established Buddhist orders. The people revere Amida, Denichi, Yakushi, and other Buddhas even more than their own parents and lords, he declared, and as a result, the three calamities and seven disasters are occurring in greater magnitude than in any previous age. His unrelenting criticism of the masses' devotion to these other Buddhist teachings earned him the ire of both the populace and the authorities, who saw him as a threat to the social order. Yet, Nichiren embraced this persecution as a badge of honor, likening himself to a moth that flies into a flame or a mouse that dashes in front of a cat. In his own words, he was a perverse person, a label he wore with defiant pride, for he saw his suffering as a necessary consequence of his role as the votary of the Lotus Sutra. As Nichiren himself wrote, because he is the votary of the Lotus Sutra, he has suffered all manner of persecution at the hands of the three powerful enemies. But it was precisely this unwavering commitment to the Lotus Sutra that drew followers to Nichiren, like a disciple of such a person. For they recognized in his message a profound and unsettling truth, that the very calamities plaguing the land were the result of the people's misguided devotion to other Buddhist teachings. And they were drawn to the promise of salvation that lay at the heart of Nichiren's teachings, the Lotus Sutra, the staff which helps all Buddhas of the three existences as they enter upon the path to enlightenment. At the center of this doctrinal battle stood the symbol of the sword, a metaphor that Nichiren himself embraced with a striking clarity. I have received the two swords, he wrote, a long and a short one, to be offered in prayer. These swords, he explained, were once instruments of evil, but now that they have been offered to the Buddha, they have become a sword for good, just like a demon who professes Buddhism. In Nichiren's vision, the sword was a double-edged metaphor, a symbol of both the destructive power of misguided faith and the transformative potential of true enlightenment. The long sword, fully equal to the celebrated swords Amakuni, Onikiri, and Yatsurugi, represented the might of the established Buddhist orders and the forces of darkness that sought to silence Nichiren's voice. Yet, by offering this sword to the Lotus Sutra, it had been transformed into a weapon of good, a tool that could now be wielded in service of the ultimate truth. This idea of the sword as a vessel for both good and evil resonated deeply with Nichiren's followers, who saw in it a reflection of the duality that lay at the heart of the human experience. For just as the sword could be used to slay one's enemies, it could also serve as a walking stick, a guide in support on the treacherous path to enlightenment. Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, Nichiren declared, will be your unbreakable staff to take you safely over the mountains of death. This invocation of the Lotus Sutra's central mantra was not merely a call to faith, but a testament to the transformative power of the teachings themselves. For Nichiren believed that by embracing the Lotus Sutra, the very tools of destruction could be reforged into instruments of salvation. This vision of the sword as a symbol of both good and evil found its ultimate expression in Nichiren's teachings on the nature of the Lotus Sutra itself. The Lotus Sutra, he wrote, will be a lantern in the dark or a boat at a crossing. At times it will be water, and at other times, fire. Just as the sword could be wielded for both righteous and nefarious purposes, the Lotus Sutra was a text of infinite adaptability, capable of providing guidance and succor in the darkest of times. It was this unyielding belief in the supremacy of the Lotus Sutra that made Nichiren such a divisive and influential figure in the religious landscape of 13th century Japan. To his followers, he was a beacon of hope, a guide on the difficult road to enlightenment. But to his detractors, he was a dangerous heretic, a perverse person, whose teachings threatened to unravel the very fabric of society. And yet, Nichiren's message endures, a testament to the power of the human spirit to confront the challenges of its age. For in the symbol of the sword, he had found a metaphor that spoke to the duality at the heart of the human experience, the capacity for both destruction and redemption, 
for both darkness and light. And in the teachings of the Lotus Sutra, he had discovered a path to transcendence, a way to transform the very tools of our undoing into the instruments of our salvation. As Nichiren's teachings spread across the Japanese archipelago, his followers became increasingly drawn to the symbolic power of the sword. They saw in this ancient weapon a reflection of the spiritual battles they faced in their own lives, the constant struggle between the forces of good and evil, light and darkness. For many, the sword became a tangible embodiment of Nichiren's vision, a physical representation of the transformative potential that lay at the heart of his teachings. And so, they imbued these blades with a sacred purpose, offering them up to the Lotus Sutra in the hopes of harnessing their power for the greater good. One such disciple was a young warrior named Tojo Kiyonobu, whose life had been forever altered by his encounter with Nichiren's teachings. Tojo had been a skilled swordsman, his blade honed to a razor's edge and his skills tested on countless battlefields. But as he delved deeper into the world of Nichiren Buddhism, he began to see his sword in a new light. This sword, Tojo mused, was once an instrument of destruction, a tool used to cut down my enemies. But now, through the power of the Lotus Sutra, it has been transformed into a weapon of enlightenment, a means by which I can protect the truth and guide others to the path of salvation. With this newfound understanding, Tojo began to treat his sword with a reverence he had never known before. He would spend hours meticulously cleaning and polishing the blade, imbuing it with a sense of sacred purpose. And when he wielded it in combat, he did so not with the reckless abandon of a seasoned warrior, but with the focused intensity of a spiritual practitioner. It was in this state of heightened awareness that Tojo found himself on the battlefield, facing off against a formidable foe. As their blades clashed, the young warrior felt a surge of energy coursing through his body, a sense of connection to something greater than himself. And in that moment, he knew that his sword was more than just a weapon, it was a conduit, a channel through which the power of the Lotus Sutra could be channeled. With each strike, Tojo could feel the weight of his sword shifting, its balance and form adapting to the ebb and flow of the battle. It was as if the blade itself was alive, responding to the rhythms of the Dharma that pulsed through his veins. And as he drove his opponent back, he knew that he was not fighting for his own survival, but for the sake of preserving the truth that Nichiren had entrusted to him. In the aftermath of the battle, Tojo knelt before his sword, offering it up to the Lotus Sutra with a sense of profound reverence. This blade, he whispered, is no longer an instrument of destruction, but a tool of enlightenment. May it serve as a beacon of hope for all who seek to follow the path of the Bodhisattva. As word of Tojo's transformation spread through the ranks of Nichiren's followers, others began to follow in his footsteps. Swords that had once been wielded in the service of war were now being consecrated and imbued with a sacred purpose, becoming tangible symbols of the struggle between good and evil that lay at the heart of Nichiren's teachings. For these disciples, the sword was not just a physical weapon, but a metaphor for the spiritual battles they fought every day. It was a reminder that the path to enlightenment was fraught with challenges, and that true victory could only be achieved through the unwavering devotion to the Lotus Sutra. And as they faced down their adversaries, whether on the battlefield or in the realm of ideas, these followers of Nichiren drew strength from the power of their transformed blades. They knew that their swords were no longer instruments of destruction, but tools of enlightenment, a physical manifestation of the Dharma that they had pledged to uphold. In this way, the swords of Nichiren's disciples became more than just weapons, they became sacred objects, imbued with the transformative power of the Lotus Sutra. And as they wielded these blades, they were not just fighting for their own survival, but for the very future of the Dharma itself. For Nichiren, the sword had always been a powerful symbol, a metaphor for the duality of the human experience and the transformative potential of the teachings he espoused. And in the hands of his devoted followers, this ancient weapon found new life, becoming a tangible expression of the spiritual battles they fought every day. Through their unwavering commitment to the Lotus Sutra, these disciples of Nichiren had managed to forge a new path, 